Hey guys, I'm going to quickly go through, it'll probably be about a 10 minute video, I'm going to go through what I've been working on the past two days. Um, I've been live streaming a lot of this, except it turned out to be about 11 or 12 hours worth of live stream, so I don't know whether or not I'm going to upload those to YouTube. I have them recorded, um, but whether or not I actually put them on YouTube, I'm not sure. Um, but basically what I've been working on is a VTX powered uh, virtual machine. Uh, driver for my OS which basically allows me to load up a dumped process um, and run it. So what I have here is I have a very simple program it is kind of emulating ping parsing for uh, IRC but then I kinda got lazy and I just stopped. You can see I have two div by zeros here that's only what I'm using for breakpoints. I know I can use debug break but these are just a little bit simpler to see uh, when I have it actually executing. So uh, what I have is I have this whole program. I have it built so I can, oops, that's the wrong screen. Uh, I can just build it here. If I run it, you'll see that it crashes at this div by zero, uh, which is fine. It crashes in that function, whatever, 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 all good. But what I have is I have a debugger, which uh, I've written before. This is just a program. Uh, it's a debugger I wrote uh, about a year ago, and I've used it as the core of many of my tools. This is probably one of my most prized tools, even though it's only about a thousand lines. It's uh, been the core of most of my fuzzers which have been successful. So, um, what it is, it's just a debugger uh, written in C, so it's just simple to use, and I wrote it myself so I know exactly how it works internally if I want to change things. But what I've done is I've repurposed it so when it hits a breakpoint, it will dump the process. Um, into my own dump format. And this dump format has uh, all the uh, GP GPRs and all the general purpose registers, and it also dumps out the memory regions that are mapped in, the protections of them, and um, the actual data that belongs to them. So I can build this little program here. Uh, I've got some warnings, whatever. I kind of hacked in the new function. The rest of the code is clean, but uh, this is kind of a temporary thing. And by running it, what you'll see is it will uh, dump the core here, and then it will pop into WindyBug uh, so I can do further monitoring of the process. You can see this is kind of what we had before. The only thing is it launched through my uh, debugger, which has already logged this information. Now what I can do with that is I can run fault quotes on the dump. This is process core dump.bin. This is the output from the debugger. Uh, all that does is it creates a file system that has a length and a hash and whatever, so I can do some integrity checking when I load up uh, a file into my OS. So just a very crude file system, that's the only point of that uh, step. Now what I can do is I'm going to quickly change uh, one part of this code here. Uh, currently it will reset the VM when it crashes, I don't want that, and Pixie is disabled, uh, which is good, and no, that's just building the OS, and I can now run it. So I'm running it in box here because it has VTX emulation. This is just the first breakpoint in the BIOS. And I run it. What it's doing now is it's loading the file uh, from the disk. Then it prints out that it has done one fuzz case. It took that amount of time, and it takes that amount of time per fuzz case. Uh, the reason I have these counters is because, as you'll see later in the video, the normal operation mode is where it loops around more and more. Now what you see is that uh, a CPU is uh, triple faulted. That's fine. I force all of the uh, VMs to triple fault on any uh, exception. That's just solely for testing right now. Obviously, later I'll add some uh, more support for um, interrupts. But here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to set uh, RCX to 1 because it's being used for the div. The only reason I'm doing this is because I want the div to succeed. And then I'm going to run, because in the VM, the div has already passed. And what you'll see here is that I hit the second div, which is at 8.5e. And if we look at where the VM crashed, it's at 8.5e. Now, other things we have is we have this pointer, which points to the end of the string. I can bring up the code. We're doing a string string to get a pointer. And if we look at the registers, we'll see that R8 corresponds to that. And if we look over here in the VM, we'll see that R8 matches exactly what we have over here. So what we were able to do is we were able to lift the process and then run it elsewhere and get the exact same execution result. Now in the future, I'm going to need to add 
uh, system level support for uh, syscalls. So anything that's not already loaded into the process and say a new DLL needs to be loaded or a write needs to be made, read, socket operations, anything that will syscall into the system must go through, or I must either emulate or uh, somehow figure out a way to deal with that. Maybe uh, emulate the whole kernel rather than a single process. But that's what I have right here. Uh, what I can do uh, next is I can put it, I can uncomment this where it will now loop. Um, just got to pop up that window again. Here it is. Let's kill that VM. And now if we run it, what you'll see is that we will continuously um, once it loads from disk, it's a lot faster on actual hardware. Once again, this is box. Um, you'll see I keep getting the printouts here, and that's because we're getting the same crash over and over again, because when we hit the crash, we reset the VM. We're not doing any fuzzing yet on this. Uh, this is just running the VM, loading it, and printing the state. Uh, but that's just a demonstration in box of what it can do. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring it over to actual hardware. So... Uh, I have not tried this on stream before. I know this isn't stream, but on a recording before. So I'll build it, and I'm going to switch the screen to my desktop. Uh, desktop meaning a physical machine here that I'm going to boot. So, some of the things about this, it's VTX powered. It currently works for only 64-bit Windows programs. The only reason it works for 64-bit Windows programs is because I only wrote a dumper for Windows and I've only written a page table mapper for 64-bit. Adding support for all the Unixes by writing a Unix debugger probably take an hour or two. Adding support for 32-bit, same thing, hour or two. So it's about four hours to get full support for x86 on Unix and Windows. So I'm not going to do that yet. But here you can see this is running on actual hardware. Um, you can see at the very bottom left there's a counter that's currently at 16, uh, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 1000. That is the total number of iterations this has gone through. Um, it's about one and a half thousand iterations per second currently. And then all of the 16 lines above are all of the different cores printing out their statuses. So the lines are the first column is the number of cases for that core. The second column is the number of ticks that have elapsed on that core, not time relevant, but that's the RDTSC, the tick count. And on the very right hand side is the number of ticks per iteration. So that's telling me what my overhead is. Um, now, one thing you'll find interesting is that you'll see that eight of these cores are running significantly slower. They're running at 40, uh, 40 million uh, ticks per cycle rather than 23 million ticks per cycle. And that is because I haven't implemented NUMA in my system. So this is a dual quad-core machine, so it's eight physical cores and 16 virtual cores. Um, now the issue with having two physical CPUs is that I have two memory banks. And currently I'm only using one memory bank, which means when uh, the CPUs on the other core, or <laughs> When the cores on the other CPU have to access the memory that they're using here, it has to reach through the other processor via QPI and then get the memory from there. It's very, very, very nasty and it takes much more time and that's why you're seeing the performance hit on those other cores where they're about 50% slower. Now, um, obviously I'm going to add NUMA support for my system, which will mean that uh, the CPUs will operate on memory in their bank, so I'll basically clone the memory between the two uh, processors and I'll run them and treat them almost as if they're two separate physical machines uh, running on the same motherboard. Now, what else am I gonna do? Uh, first of all, this performance is not too great so far. That's because I'm currently restoring the entire process. Um, instead of just restoring the registers that have changed and also restoring uh, only the memory that has changed, and I can do that via the uh, dirty flag on the pages. Um, I'm restoring the entire process state, I'm return, uh, I'm storing the entire host state, and so it's very, very slow currently. However, um, I'd say about 99, 99.9% .9 of this, these cycles, this 23 million cycle number, is all in the overhead of actually setting up the VM and booting the VM 
and doing all the context switches to get the VM loaded. Uh, now, if you were to expand the program, like this one, how it's, you know, it's running a very simple program, but if this were to say be a 1,000 line, 2,000 line state machine that's processing input, you'd probably probably see somewhat similar numbers uh, on the screen in terms of performance. And that's solely because I'm not really spending much time executing the program. I'm spending almost all my time setting up the program. So it's all overhead. But also, as I said, I'm restoring the whole process and restoring the whole uh, register state. So if I weren't doing that, I'd probably get a five time speed up. And just by adding NUMA, I'll get that 75% speed up where all these other ones will drop to 23 million instead of uh, 40 million. And maybe the it will maybe all of them will drop to like 20 million because you won't have uh, another CPU interfering with your uh, access to your memory. So this is kind of what I have so far. I'm going to use it probably to do some CTF style challenges. I'm uh, going to use it for fuzzing on actual programs once I get that wrapped up. I'm probably not going to be um, streaming when I'm working on that. However, when I'm working on, on the internals and things that aren't very fuzz related or things I don't think uh, dramatically change the value of the program, I'll comfortably be streaming. And right now, you know, I kind of crudely put this together over the past two days. I added memory management to my OS. I added support for uh, VTX. I've never worked with VTX before, so that's completely new to me. And uh, tonight or early tomorrow, I'm gonna add NUMA support. So I've added a lot to my OS. It's about time to do a full rewrite of the OS. I guess not a full rewrite, but a refactor. I wanna make it a lot cleaner because I've, you know, this is a lot of new stuff I've put in in the past two days that uh, I didn't really know how to manage them before. Now that I know how they work, uh, I'll clean it up and probably redo the OS. Um, but other than that, I hope you like this video. I hope you like where this is going. I'm going to do some cool stuff with this, hopefully in the near future um, on bigger programs. Maybe uh, I'll implement open, read, write, and close for Unix so I could emulate a Unix program in here that actually does syscalls to read and write. Um, maybe I'll make a debugging interface so I can actually step through. That would require writing a disassembler, which is kind of a a big task. Um, I need to write one eventually, so I should just get to it. But I'm kind of rambling. But this is what I have right now. Feel free to follow me on Twitter. Uh, I'm at Gamozo Lab, so G A M O Z O L A B S. Um, if you want to ever try and catch me live, I'll first of all I'll be putting on Twitter. Otherwise, you can follow me on Twitch or subscribe, whatever it's called on Twitch. Uh, I'm running as Gamozo on Twitch, so G A M O Z O. And that's where you can find live streams. I'll be probably doing a live stream tomorrow of maybe adding NUMA supports or uh, further functionality that I'm adding to this. But just wanted to make this quick video. It's gone a little longer than I want. This is just kind of a demonstration of what I've been working on the past couple of days. So hope you like it.